Morning guys. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Buckskin Dave. We're uh, drinking some black rifle coffee this morning and uh, we're going to work on this barrel. Our, my stock has been setting overnight. It's ready to be buffed on. It's going to get its first coat of oil. So <clears throat> stick with me. I've got this. I've knocked my sights off. Um, you got to know which way your sights go on and off. Most guys I do it, they go on from the right side to the left, it means you got to knock them out the other way. And the reason why I do it that way is my left side of the dovetail is a little tighter. So as I put it in and as it comes to middle, uh, where the sight's going to be in the middle, it tightens up. So you don't want to knock it out that way, you want to go back the way you came. Good idea to know which way they go. Like I say, that's the way I do it. I think most people do it that way, from right to left. Anyway, the sights are out. And uh, I've got this down to where I'm going with my 320. And there's two spots. One on this side that shows that has some dings in it from the factory. And I'm going to work those out with a file. Uh, but for right now... I should have took them out when I was drop filing it, but I did. Don't ask me why. So I'm going to bring it down to 320, and then down to 400 for the top flat, two angle flats, and the side flat. The bottoms are sanded down to 150, 120, 150. I'm going to leave them alone. Nobody looks at them anyway. So anyway, I'm going to continue on here. Get these flats done, and I'll be back with you in a minute. So grab that cup of coffee and sit on. Take her easy. Three flats done. I've got my Maker's Mark 58 cal and number eight. I guess that's kind of a serial number. Uh, it's really interesting. One an interesting fact. Uh, when these were built, the maker put his name, and I'll use Sam Hawkins for an example. He would put S. Hawken and then um, um, St. Louis because they're made in the city. And I don't know if that was a requirement. That's just what they did. Nowadays, if I make a modern rifle, I have to put my maker's mark or my name and the city and state on the rifle. And of course, when it comes to uh, black powder, they don't really consider them guns, so there's no requirement. I, I like to put the maker's mark on it and the caliber, and uh, then I keep uh, number eight is like, that's this series of guns, and that's how many of them I've made um, in this series. So that's just something for me. Um, a lot of times I'll put the year on the bottom flat that I built it, and uh, this way down the road somebody can see when it was made. Anyway, I'm going to continue on. I'm running this down to 400 grit. It's putting a great finish. I took those two nicks out of the other side, and they came out nice and flat. So I'll be done with this in just a few, I don't know, it's about 15, 20 minutes here. I'll be done, and we'll be ready to go. Yeah, so it's getting to be just where I want. One thing you got to remember, if you're trying to make a piece of art, okay, that's one thing. If you're trying to make something for a purist that wants his gun to look like it came out of that Hawkins shop, you got to remember, <laughs> these barrels were pounded out of slats of iron, round and uh, then filed down, octagon, hammered, filed, sanded, whatever. A little nick or chip right here or divot is going to make it more authentic as far as being an older gun. Anyway, I put my maker's mark here, caliber here, and number eight there. In the and I just got to flip this over now and put the year on the bottom. I started this in 2019. I'm going to finish it in 2020, but I'm going to mark it 2019. This first rubbing, I'm using steel wool. Mainly because I want to work that sealer down to 
a little bit so the oil starts working into that wood past the sealer. And, uh, and after that, I think I'll buff it with a, uh, a wool, regular lambskin wool pipe. So you got to make sure that this thing is cured before you start rubbing it with, with uh, the steel wool. And this one is very well cured. It's been overnight, been warm in the shop. So let's get this in here. Yep. See, when I blow, I know I'm cured good because when I blow, all the little bits of steel wool just blow out of there. Okay, I like to start on the big part of the stock, back of it, the butt, mainly because then when I get to the little part, I got something to hold on to to lift a little. This, I do this the same, rub it in like I want to catch it on fire. Soaking in really nice. I'll put a little bit of this oil in the um, in the mortises too, because it's it helps protect the it helps protect the wood. And you know, you say, well, how about I might miss something? Well, you're going to put several coats on, so give it a period of time. I mean, don't don't be careless. I don't like to be careless, but if I do miss something, I get another chance at it. I like putting on, really rubbing it in. Some folks, some Smiths, will put the oil in the palm of their hand and rub it in and get it really warm. It soaks in. Um, I got enough chemicals. <laughs> I went through the 60s, okay? I got enough chemicals in my system. I don't need any of this oil in there, so. I use rubber gloves and I use a cloth. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. Don't forget your ramrod, your wiping stick. What do you guys call this? A wiping stick or a ramrod? I don't know if both of them are correct or, <laughs> or if either of them are correct. Anyway, it's nice to have this done when you're done with your gun instead of having a Put the gloves on and get your stain and everything out and do it again. So, again, I like to get it warm, and then I will. Uh, this is just I'm just putting oil on this. I didn't bring a sealer. It'll probably be all right. They tell me there's a trick to keeping these from breaking, and uh, what it is is a soak it in stove oil or coal oil or something of that nature till it's just. I mean, you can bend it. I've never tried it, but they tell me that'll. Might keep you from breaking it. Anyway, that's it for this morning's cup of coffee. Uh, stick with the channel. I'll see you in the morning. We'll uh, buff this down, put another coat on, and uh, throw that barrel into the uh, bluing solution. And then we'll start putting this baby back together. It's almost boom time. Anyway, you guys have a great day. See you next time. Thanks for stopping by.